Hello everybody and welcome to an episode of Armello. Now I know what you're asking, where's Darkest Dungeon? Well, after yesterday's failed recordings and looking back on things, I kind of re made a realization that I've grown a little bored of recording Darkest Dungeon videos. Don't get me wrong, it's still a great game, I love to play it, but I've kind of grown bored of recording them. And, well, it just so happened that there was a free midweek of Armello. I played through the prologue, I played a multiplayer game, and despite having lost, I still had fun. And I feel like that's the mark of a great game. And I figured, why not give this a try on the channel? Now, we won't be playing multiplayer yet, because I'd like to take at least one AI game to explain the uh, rules and mechanics of the game to you guys. And I'll be playing a custom game that has the timers disabled just so that, you know, I do have the time to explain things to you. So let's get into the game. Now, the game has various heroes you can choose from, including ones that you have to purchase DLC to get. But oh well. I feel, I feel that there'll be more than enough characters here for us to play for now. We have Thane, who is of the Moon, er, of the Wolf Clan. Because there are four different clans in the game. There are the Wolves, the Rats, the Bears, and the Rabbits. Now, each character has their own special abilities. For example, Thane here has Swordmaster. Sword cards burned in battle pierce opponents' defenses. I'll go over that when we get to... Or I'll go over card burning when we get to it. And they also have their own stats. Fight, body, wits, spirit. Body is basically health, and I will explain all the others as we go through them. They also have apparently their own skins, but I'll go over that. But that's, that's something else for another time. Each clan also has their own affinity. And this affects how they play in combat and perils. For example, the wolves have the affinity of the moon, which means they get bonuses during the nighttime. The rats also have affinity with the moon, but the bears and the rabbits have affinity with daytime. Now, for the sake of this game, I'm going to go with Thane, because I feel like he's easier to start off with. So without further ado, let's get going. I'm just going to leave all the others at random. And we're playing against two bears and a rat. Alright, fine. Now, we can also pick our own ring. Now, we currently only have one, as we have to... Uh, ...meet certain objectives in order to unlock the others. So, the Sapphire grants stealth on mountains day and night. I do also have a amulet unlocked. Plus one clan affinity dice bonus. Because I did play a multiplayer game, but lost. The other ones give you plus fight, plus body, plus wits, and plus spirit. And all these have an effect on the gameplay. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna give Thane plus one fight. Yeah, just give him an extra edge. And without further ado, let's get this game started. From the wolf to bear, the clans declare, the time has come to take the throne. For rots creeping, it twists our king. Heroes rise, save our mellow. The clan pets are here to play hero, it seems. Yes, the whole story of the game is that the king has become afflicted with this thing called rot. And I'll go over the board a little bit later. Let's see. Listen well, hero. There's plenty you could do and plenty who will do it. So do it well or find another idiot. Now, we basically have quests that we can complete along the way. Now, I could go for this, try and get, I believe, a companion. And along with extra spirit and prestige. Prestige is very important in this game. I could go for pruning weeds, which will get me extra fight and prestige. Along with a Lionheart breastplate if I complete it. 
In battle, plus two shields, and wear never retreats. That can be very useful. Plus one to a random stat, changes each turn. Or we could go for a blind sight and get a spirit stone. These can be very important to one of the many endings of the game. But because our highest stat is fight, and it informs you which stat is going to be tested, I'm going to go for pruning weeds. The King's Guard have failed in their duty to keep the land safe from bandits and thieves. Someone needs to take up arms. And thankfully, it's close by. Quick AI turns unlocked, quick AI turn blah 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 has been enabled. You can disable quick AI turns in the gameplay options menu. Yeah, that was already a thing. Now, here is the board upon which we shall astride to victory. Now, the basic premise of the game is that the king has been afflicted with this evil thing called Rot, and we now have to fight to become either the new king or queen of Armello. And there are four ways to go about it. The most direct one is to just go to the castle, kill the king. As simple as that. Well, and survive. But there are also three other endings. There is the prestige ending where when the king dies, whoever has the highest prestige becomes the new king or queen. There is the purification ending, which is gained by collecting four spirit stones and bringing them to the king to purify him of the rot. There is also the corruption ending, which you gain by having more rot than the king and then killing him. Now, rot I will go over when it comes into play. Prestige, you can gain it through various means, either by completing quests or by defeating other players. But it can also be lost by, you know, dying. We also have our cards over here, the Expendables. These are basically trickery cards, which you can use to affect gameplay, either on your on players or on various areas. There are equipment cards, or items, which we can use to heal ourselves or increase our power. For example, this heavy flail in battle when attacking, plus two swords, which means we automatically get two swords. And I'll go over battle when we get to it. And there are also spell cards which cost magic. Magic at every turn, or was it every dawn, gets reset to your spirit unless your magic, through some means of cards, becomes higher. Now, seeing as how we have five gold to our name, I'm going to equip this heavy flail. Always good to have an advantage in combat. Now, movement. Every player has 3 AP unless you use certain cards to increase your AP, and that's all you get. Every terrain on the map affects your affects you in some way, minus the planes that has no effect whatsoever. The, <clears throat> sorry, the mountains, they cost 2 AP to enter. Just to enter, not to leave. So if you have 1 AP left over when you enter them, you can leave them. But they also provide you with one shield in combat. Then we have the settlements. You walk over a settlement, you claim it for yourself. That What that means is that every day at dawn, you gain plus one gold for every settlement. And this also includes your clan's grounds. So you're guaranteed at the very least one gold every dawn. Now we've got the swamp here. When you enter a swamp, you lose health. We also have the forest, which at night provides you with stealth. Stealth can be important because it basically renders you invisible to everybody on the board, which means if they attack you, you get to ambush them. So it can be useful. But with that, I'm going to end my turn and let the AIs take theirs. Alright, Sana got evil eye. Plus two wits until end of turn. Ah! Ooh! That's not good. So, a lot just happened. Basically, there are these ruins all over the area of Armello. What that does is... What it does is that when you enter it, it basically has a roulette coin spinning thing going around. And it can determine various things to happen. You can get 
you uh, can get some gold, you can get some artifacts, you can get various things, but what can happen... But what can also happen is that a Bane can spawn. And it killed her outright, which gave her some rot. Not a good thing. Oh boy, so much happening in so much time. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll get back to that in a moment. Basically... You, every turn, if you don't have a full hand, which how many cards counts as a full hand is determined by your wits. The higher your wits, the more cards you can hold. And you can draw either an item, a spell, or a trickery. I'm going to go for an item to replace the heavy flail. Ooh. Okay. So, what happened is a bane spawned. That can happen when you explore dungeons. And it's not the best of things, because these banes can be dangerous. Rot. Rot is something that comes with Banes, and as you saw with the King, he gained one Rot at night. He's also going to lose one health each dawn, until he eventually dies. Banes are basically despicable creatures that, during the daytime, if you look around the map, you'll see a glowing dungeon. What that dungeon... <laughs> what that glowing means is that Come nighttime, that is where a Bane is going to spawn from, which was actually something they added in a recent update. Banes hold no loyalty to anyone, and they will attack everyone. If they manage to kill you, you will gain Rot. Now, Rot is a double-edged sword. It can give you an advantage in combat. Like, when you go up against an opponent who has, say, two Rot and you have three, then you gain two die, because the way it works is that if your rot is greater than his, then you gain a combat advantage based on their rot. But it can also be a double-edged blade. You see these stone circles? Well, they're one of the only other means of healing yourself outside of items like willed weed. That's that willed weed. But if you become corrupted, which is a... That which is accomplished by gaining 5 rot, then they will actually harm you. Of course, they are also a good means of protecting yourself against banes or other trickery or magic cards that use rot, or induce rot. Well, at least one of them. But, back to the game. We are two steps away from our, uh, not our dungeon, from our quest. Now, when it comes to quests, we have a dangerous route, which can it, <clears throat> which if we succeed, will get us special equipment, and along with the fight and the <clears throat> along with the fight and the prestige. Or we could take the safe route. We still get the stat boosts, but we don't get special equipment. Now we have sixty percent because of our six body or six fight. I say we take this dangerous route. Because that Lionheart breastplate can be useful. And we succeeded! No lowly, over th no lowly thief will overcome you, no matter how many try. You clear the forest and help yourself to the thieves' treasure stash. Best part about this equipable? It costs absolutely nothing to equip it. So it can be very useful. And I think... Ooh, should I go for the dungeon in the hopes of getting bonus gold? Or should I go for the settlement in hopes of getting more guaranteed gold at the beginning of my turn? Mm, I'd rather go for the guaranteed thing and not risk a Bane showing up. Alright, let's end our turn. I know I'm a little all over the place when it comes to this stuff, but eh. Oh yes, when you end your turn, if you've finished a quest, then you can use this rumor. Another Bane, really? Whatever. Now let's see, Mages and Scrolls, we get Hand Cannons, which gives... In, fir in battle, first two burn sun or moons gain pierce. It could be useful. Spirit Stone. I don't think I'm going to be going for a Spirit Stone ending. So instead, I'm going to go for this, because that Spy Master could be useful. 
It's a bit of a travel, but I think I can handle it. Now, one thing I haven't gone over are the royal guards, or king's guards. These guys hold loyalty only to the king and will do as he says. Yeah. <laughs> right, this is one other thing. Every dawn, whoever is the prestige leader, which in this case is Sana. Under my name, it is Lord. King Siphon's two magic from all heroes don't have it, one prestige. No, that's fine. Basically, what happens in who <clears throat> is that whoever has the most prestige at the beginning of the next day will have the or will have the power to select what the king enacts. Now, back to the king's guard. These guys basically wander around, they'll attack Banes. They won't directly attack players unless you have a bounty or something from the king has been enacted. And <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, right. Village. Uh, basically, what happens is if you attack the King's Guard or if some special event happens that causes you to gain a bounty, they will go after you. Now, bounties can also be claimed by other players. So you're just going to go around to avoid the King's Guard and the peril. Uh-oh. Bane's going to spawn there next turn. Or next night. And uh, the longer you go, like the more turns you go without getting killed, the higher the bounty gets. So they can be a decent means of acquiring... Ooh, she got something. Anyways, where was I? Alright, it can be a decent means of acquiring money. And he teleported. Which can be good and bad, depending on your situation. Ooh, that was not good. Now, perils. When it comes to perils, you basically take into another screen. And you have to roll a bunch of die. How many die you get to roll depends on your fight stat, which in my case is seven. And you get... She is not faring well against those Banes, which in my case is seven. Uh, let's see. Now, when it comes to perils, you have to roll exactly what the uh, peril is asking you. It could be random symbols. If you don't, then the effect of the peril gets passed on to you. I can't actually go after that Bane, because I don't have 2 AP. Could go for the temple, but I think I'll stick in the forest and stay hidden. But yeah, it'll be any random symbols, you have to match all three of them. Otherwise, you'll be, well, afflicted with whatever the cart is hitting you with. Ooh, he got a spirit stone. Yeah, for example, he didn't match that, so he got hit with Moonbite. Whatever that is. I know it's got something to do with losing health during certain points, but I can't remember. Still the prestige leader, so she gets to decide what happens. Under my name, the king releases all prisoners of the Lord. crown, new king's trickery. Perils appear across the kingdom. Oh boy. Well, thankfully, none of them are near me. Ah. Oh wait, no, that's not necessarily a good thing if the king is attacking that bank. Huh. Never mind. He didn't succeed, so that means he doesn't get to take its place. Now, the King's Guard are powerful enemies. You gain nothing from fighting them outside of a bounty. 
so I only recommend fighting them if you absolutely, positively have to. Alright, I'm gonna try taking on this Bane. I might just have an advantage against it. Now, it does have a higher rot than me. But... But, because of the fact that I have no rot, it gets nothing on me. Now, remember how I mentioned something about burning cards? Now, ordinarily, there's a timer here. You gotta do things before it passes, but... Let's say you have a card you really want to get rid of. Say... Expendables, or Barkskin. You burn this by throwing it in here, and one of your die automatically becomes that symbol. Now, there are multiple symbols. There are Rot symbols, which, unless you have Rot, gain you nothing. There are Shield symbols, which provide defense and block one attack. Now, each attack only does one damage, but that's more than enough. You have Sun symbols, which, during the daytime, which it is, will give you an attack, but will count as a miss during the night. Conversely, there are Moon symbols, which give you an attack during the day, or an attack during the night and a miss during the day. There are also wield symbols, which count as attack, and then explode for some odd reason, and give you a, or a bonus roll. Now, I'm going to take this bark skin, because I don't really need it, because here's the thing. Burning cards are also a good way to get rid of the ones you don't really need, and can't afford to spend, in order to gain, or in order to, you know, free up your hand. Boom, I get an automatic attack. Now to roll the die see what we get. Ooh, lots of attack. We're definitely going to kill it. But it is going to get some damage on us. And we gain one prestige for killing it. Now we have a 50% chance of, of a, uh, yeah, 50% chance of accomplishing this. Remember, the when it comes to body, it's based on your maximum body, not your current body. Eh, it's risky, but I'll take it. Come on. Yeah, it's complete RNG, and we gain the Spy Master. You push forward, relying on strength alone. How did you? The warlock never finishes her words of surprise. Your blade ends her life. And we get our first companion. The Spy Master, who reveals all of our opponent's quest locations, which can be very, very useful to us. Because if we know where they're going, we could maybe set a peril, make things more difficult for them. Hmm. Not sure where Zasha, or whatever her name is, is going. Hmm, weird, her quest isn't showing up. Maybe she already accomplished it and hasn't picked a new one. Now, let's see. Uh, I think I'm going to use this Willed Weed to regain some health and go for the settlement. Zosha, that was it. She's probably going to come after me, but oh well. Bounty? Oh, you son of a... And, of course, she passes the peril. Alright, let's get our next quest. Thane, I've kept my eyes and ears open for news for you. That for, for news you might, might, have, might be needing. Now, let's see. I don't have much in spirit, don't have much in wit, so I'm going after Courage of the Cubs. A wolf clan cub has been kidnapped. You must save her. Ooh, unused action points convert into two gold. That's a good companion to have. And with my 7 fights, I'll have a 70% chance of succeeding. She's probably going to try and attack me. Although she does have 1 health now, which is not smart on her part. Ooh, she also has a heavy flail. Hmm. Not going to bother burning any cards, so let's just roll. Hey, hey. We lose. 
not only do I gain prestige from killing her, I also cause her to lose prestige. Though I am going to have the Royal Guard to deal with. Because I believe the only way to get rid of a bounty is to die. Okay, good. The Bane did not attack me, and I do have a chance to run away. Uh, not much for spells. Let's get a trickery card. Ooh, mercenaries. Minus one action point and minus two health. And let's go for an item. Spyglass. Gain scout on all your perils. Not sure entirely how that works. Now, where's that quest? No, that's not it. No, oh, there it is. Ah, uh, probably gonna take the long way around. Capture this settlement. And gain some stealth here. Hmm, should I equip it? Yeah, why not? Not sure how it works, but hey, only one way to find out. Oh, by the way, these screaming villages are basically where things have been going wrong. Say, a Bane attacks, or a certain uh, King's de Declaration, where the Royal Guards go in and attack villages, happen. Oh. Okay. Did not see her coming from there. Oh, that's right. Brune is up top. Now, unfortunately, because we were ambushed, because she attacked us from stealth, we're not allowed to burn cards. But so be it. Let's roll the die and hope we can get enough shields to survive her as onslaught. Come on, shield, shield, shield. Nope. Well, maybe. That eh, doesn't matter. Yeah, so even if they get a killing blow, or you get a killing blow, they can still attack you. But this death isn't necessarily a bad thing. Yes, I lost prestige, but I also gained prestige, so it was a net of nothing. So I didn't gain anything, I didn't lose anything. And because I am prestige leader, a new I get to decide declarations. Highway fees. Until next dawn, the king is imposing highway fees of two gold in order to enter any settlement. Not sure I want that. Each hero is stripped of one randomly equipped item. If you have no equipped items, minus two prestige. I don't want to risk losing my Lionheart breastplate, because that has been incredibly useful. Same thing with the heavy flail. So, I'm going to take the highway fees. Yeah, be careful, because when it says each hero, it includes yourself. Yes. This day it is so. Now, one thing that I also liked that they added in the last update was the fact that as the king's rot goes on, you also... Or, as the king's rot goes on, his appearance changes, as does that of the castle. Now, let's get an item. Moon juice. Not all that useful, but it does give us a moon card that we could burn. Now, I could go for the quest, but I would have to pay two gold, which, given my nine, isn't that bad. And I would have to deal with the peril. Hmm. But I would gain a settlement, and I'd be able to go straight for the quest, so... Let's see, Royal Collector stops you at the settlement bar demanding two gold before they'll allow you to enter. Fine. Perfect. I can just burn all these cards. I don't really want to use them anyways. Plus, I don't want to lose my Spy Master. And because I did that, I gain the settlement, and I have a free hand to get whatever I want next turn. Courage of the Cubs. We have a 70% chance of succeeding the dangerous path, so... I say we take it. The pup is tied to a post is surrounded by rat clan outlaws. Curse you, Rat Clan. You shall not succeed this day. Ha-ha! The rats are no match for you. They flee. 
The pup is safe. Inspired by your heroism, a member of the Cubs Village joins your cause. The Coin Master. Which would encourage us to not spend any... Or spend all our action points. Now let's see... Unfortunately, we are out of time, but I'm going to keep going until my next turn comes around. Let's see what our enemies do. Plus, you know, get our quest. I've not got much time left, but I'd like it, but I'd relish a chance to see some good done before I croak. Royal torture. I'd advise caution in traveling. I'd advise caution traveling near that barrow. King's guard, know you have eyes on the throne. And if they catch you, I fear the worst. Conjure. Draw one spell card each time you play a spell. Peril to the board. And I don't think I'll take the dangerous route on that, but I will take the safe one. I'm just gotta wait for someone's turn to end. And it's way over there. Hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not a very spell-heavy character. Ooh, and there goes one of my settlements. But, no matter. Alright, let's draw an item. That's nice, but not as good as my heavy flail. Let's go for a trickery. Witch Hunters. Minus four magic and one action point. Okay. Hidden Trap. Hmm, could be useful. Uh, but with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode off here for today. If you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.